Hello, I'm Laurel Sebastian, an educator with Kids for the Bay, and I'm here today to teach you about how to make your own watershed with materials that you can find at home. First, we need to assemble all of our materials, which include a piece of parchment or wax paper. You can also use regular paper if you don't have any of this at home. Two washable markers. Uh, permanent markers won't work as well, but you can try. And then um, a tray to catch any water that we might spill and a spray bottle. Um, if you don't have a spray bottle, you can also just get a cup of water and flick water onto your um, watershed. Your first step is to take your piece of paper and crumple it into a small ball. Once you've crumpled it all the way, you can start to begin to gently unfold it but we don't want to unfold all of the wrinkles. When you unfold your piece of paper, you'll want it to actually still look uh, like a mountain or hill that has high points and ridge lines, and then also low points where water will flow over or down on its way downhill. You'll also notice that because it's windy and I'm doing this outside, I've put four magnets from my fridge onto my pieces of paper so it stays in place. Your next step is to take your washable blue marker and think about where are all the places on your watershed, on your mountain that you formed, where water is going to flow down and create things like streams and rivers and lakes. So if I think that water will probably flow down this valley and then maybe form a lake down here at the bottom, I can start to trace that in on my model um, of all the places I think water is going to flow. Now that I've traced all my low points where I think water will flow and collect, I'm gonna take my brown marker and actually trace all the high points or ridge lines where I think water will shed or flow off of those ridge lines and high points. Great, it might be hard to see because this is brown parchment paper, but I do have all my ridges traced in brown and all of my waterways uh, traced in blue. And now your next step is to take your spray bottle or your cup of water and start to gently spray water onto your model. And you'll want to observe carefully as a scientist, what do you see happening to the water? as you add water, does it flow down the same areas you predicted? What's happening to the ridge lines? Are there lakes or waterfalls, streams or rivers? Make lots of observations. What do you see happening to the brown marker too? Is that flowing off of the ridge lines or staying put? And were your predictions right or wrong? And would you change anything if you were to do this again? Because if you have more wax paper, you can try a different shape of a mountain and see how the flow of the water is different. Um, you could add more or less marker to see if that changes things too. Now that I've finished my experiment and I can see places like this that have created lakes and areas over here that were rivers that flowed down into other lakes, we can think about how this makes a watershed. And a watershed is an area of land that water flows over or through on its way to a body of water like a lake or an ocean. So if, this, if we called the little river that runs off this mountain here, Strawberry Creek, this whole area that drains into Strawberry Creek and then maybe makes Strawberry Lake at the bottom would be one watershed together. Um, so there, that's that whole area of land that drains into one point. And so you might have another little watershed over here or another little watershed over here. And you could maybe even join those together. If they all, all of those rivers came together over here and flowed off the mountain, they might form one watershed together. Thank you for doing this short experiment with me. And now you can think about what the, are the watersheds in your own backyard? When it rains or snows, where does that water flow? Does it flow into a creek? And eventually, where does that creek go? Maybe it goes into the San Francisco Bay or eventually into the ocean. So we're all part of individual watersheds because all of the land around us drains that water into some body of water. 
and we ca usually call that some type of watershed. For example, you might live in sh the Strawberry Creek watershed if the water in your own backyard flows eventually into Strawberry Creek. Thank you for joining me and we hope that you can do some of our other experiments on the Kids, Kids for the Bay website.